Hi everyone, this is Nurse Anna from nursestudy.net and today we're going to be talking about angina and chest pain. This website is not intended to provide medical advice. The articles on this website are intended for entertainment or educational value only. While we strive to offer 100% accuracy, medical procedures are rapidly changing and laws vary greatly from location. Angina, also known as chest pain, is a medical condition which involves chest pain due to a decrease in blood supply to the heart. It is one of the definitive symptoms of coronary heart disease and can also be a symptom of other cardiac issues. Also known as angina pectoris, which means it is located in the chest, angina is a type of pain that is described as a heaviness, tightness, squeezing, or even pressured, as if something heavy is lying on the chest. A lot of times, um, some people will describe it feels like an elephant is lying on their chest. There are several types of angina, which include stable, unstable, variant, transmittal angina, and microvascular angina. Long-term chest pain may be diagnosed as refractory angina. It may be hard to distinguish angina from other types of chest pain, such as heartburn due to indigestion. In either case, Urgent medical attention is needed for any unexplained or new chest pain. Signs and symptoms of angina would be pain in the chest. Chest pain may radiate to the neck, shoulders, jaw, back, or arms. Shortness of breath, nausea, dizziness, even fatigue. Symptoms of angina in women may also include abdominal pain and stabbing pain instead of pressure feeling in the chest. Symptoms of angina also may differ depending on the specific type. So now we're going to speak about stable angina, most common form of angina. It's usually triggered by exertion such as climbing the stairs or even exercise. It lasts for a short period, usually less than five minutes, relieved by rest or by administration of an angina medication such as nitroglycerin. And it's usually predictable if the patient has had the same type of chest pain before. Unstable angina It's considered a precursor to a myocardial infarction, MI, or also known as heart attack. This happens even if the patient is at rest. It's not relieved by angina medication, lasts longer than stable angina, usually 30 minutes or longer, unpredictable, and it's unexpected, and it's different from the usual pattern of chest pain. Prince metal or variant angina is more rare. It results from the spasm of the coronary arteries due to a temporary lack of blood flow. It can occur at rest, it can be severe, and it may be alleviated by angina medication. Microvascular angina is a common symptom of coronary microvascular disease, also known as MVD, which involves damage to the tiny branches of the coronary arteries. May last from 10 minutes to even longer than 30 minutes, may occur overnight, and is associated with sleeping problems. Atherosclerosis, or a buildup of cholesterol-containing deposits called plaques in the arterial walls, is a common cause of the narrowing of the coronary arteries. This results in the reduction of blood flow in the heart, a condition is known as coronary artery disease, or in short, we'll say CAD. When there is a decreased blood supply to the cardiac muscle, the heart does not receive enough oxygen. The patient may not have chest pain at rest, but when he or she starts to exert effort such as doing exercise or climbing up the stairs, the demand for oxygenated blood in the heart will increase. Since the blocked coronary arteries cannot supply this additional demand, stable angina occurs. Angina can be also referred to ischemic chest pain because it involves ischemia of the heart or lack of oxygenated blood supply. Unstable angina may result from the sudden blockage, either partial or total, of the coronary artery due to the rupture of plaques or formation of blood clots. Usually, angina medications do not improve the blood flow. Thus, the patient will need emergency treatment. Variant or principal angina is rare and is particularly caused by the sudden spasm of a narrowed coronary artery. This usually occurs overnight and is mainly triggered by emotional stress, vasoconstrictor drugs, or even smoking. Now we're going to discuss the risk factors for angina. There are many risk factors. These include smoking, diabetes, or poor diabetic management, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, LDL levels, old age, 
men 45 years old and above, and women 55 years old and above, a sedentary lifestyle, lack of exercise, stress, obesity, and a family history of heart disease. Angina is an important sign of a heart attack. Along with chest pain, the patient may experience shortness of breath, radiating pain to the shoulder, arm, jaw, back, or even the teeth. Abdominal pain may also occur, as well as nausea and vomiting. The patient may feel an impending sense of doom and may also faint. So now we're going to discuss the diagnostic tests. Usually we do blood tests such as cardiac enzymes, such as troponin T and troponin I, as well as proteins such as CPK and myoglobin, because they can leak into the bloodstream when the cardiac blood vessels are damaged. So we want to do an electrocardiogram, also known as an EKG, a stress test, which is walking on a treadmill or pedaling a stationary bike while connected to an EKG, and an echocardiogram to visualize the heart. So let's now discuss treatments, medications. The following drugs may be used to treat angina. The first medication is nitrates, and this relaxes the blood vessels in order to increase blood flow to the heart. Nitroglycerin sublingual tablets are the most common form of nitrates used. The next would be anticoagulants, and these medications prevent the formation of blood clots. And then we have blood thinning agents such as aspirin to reduce the ability of the blood to clot so that blood flows easier through the narrowed arteries. Statins, also known as anti-cholesterol drugs, are used to reduce the deposits on the arterial walls. Beta blockers to decrease the demand of oxygen by means of lowering the heart rate and blood pressure. And then we have calcium channel blockers to widen the blood vessels by vasodilation. Now we'll move on to surgery. Surgical interventions are required if the medical team believes that an urgent, more aggressive treatment for CAD-related angina is needed. These surgeries include coronary artery bypass graft surgery, also known as cabbage or CABG. This is a creation of a graft to reroute the blood flow away from the diseased artery. Angioplasty with stent placement, also known as percutaneous coronary revascularization which involves the insertion of a catheter into the affected artery followed by inflation of a balloon and insertion of a stent to keep the blood vessel open. External counterpulsation, also known as ECP. And this is the use of multiple, I guess you would say blood pressure-like cuffs on the pelvis, thighs, and calves to improve blood flow to the cardiac muscle. Now let's discuss lifestyle changes under treatments. Smoking is one of the biggest risk factors of angina and CAD. The nicotine in cigarettes facilitates the constriction of blood vessels, which then increases the cardiac workload. This eventually damages the lining of the coronary arteries as well as other blood vessels. Having a low cholesterol, low sugar diet to control cholesterol and blood glucose levels. Foods rich in omega-3 fatty acids such as fish, soybeans, and flax seeds are recommended and then taking prescribed blood pressure medication to help control hypertension. We have several nursing care plans for chest pain and angina on nursestudy.net, but I'll go into one sample one here. So our for the nurse first nursing care plan, we would say decreased cardiac output related to the disease process of coronary artery disease, CAD, as evidenced by angina, patient's verbalization of heavy and tight chest pain, sweating, nausea, and a heart rate of 150 beats per minute, along with a blood pressure of 85 over 50. Our desired outcome, the patient will be able to maintain adequate cardiac output. Intervention. Assess the patient's vital sign and characteristics of heartbeat at least every four hours. Assess heart sounds via auscultation. Observe for signs of decreasing peripheral tissue perfusion, such as slow capillary refill, facial pallor, cyanosis, and cool, clammy skin. The rationale? To assist in creating an accurate diagnosis and monitor effectiveness of medical treatment. The presence of signs of decreasing peripheral tissue perfusion indicates deterioration of the patient's status and will require immediate referral to a physician. Intervention. Administer prescribed medications for coronary artery disease and angina. Rationale? Nitrates to relax blood vessels in order to increase the blood flow to the heart. Anticoagulants to prevent the formation of blood clots. Blood thinning agents such as aspirin to reduce the ability of the blood to clot. 
intervention. Apply supplemental oxygen as prescribed. Discontinue if O2 sat level is above target range or as ordered by the physician. Rationale, to increase the oxygen level and achieve an O2 sat value of at least 94%. Intervention, educate patient on stress management, deep breathing exercises, and relaxation techniques. Rationale, stress causes a persistent increase in cortisol levels, which has been linked to people with cardiac issues. Chronic stress may also cause an increase in adrenaline levels, which tend to increase the heart rate, respiratory rate, and blood sugar levels. Reducing stress is also an important aspect when dealing with fatigue. This concludes our lecture on angina. Uh, you can visit us at nursestudy.net for more care plans, practice exams, and study guides. Each of our articles has probably about two to four care plans attached to it, so it will help you in your nursing studies. This is Nurse Anna from nursestudy.net, and have a really good day.